Welcome to this Killick Explains Finance video. This week, three key words for investors in 2019, and two of them at least are particularly important in 2019 because things have changed a little bit since about September 2018. In other words, we've enjoyed a 10-year bull run more or less since the last financial crisis. If you're looking at equities, things have clearly changed. How you approach these change conditions will be critical to your long-term investing success from here onwards. Now, the background is basically what? Well, 2018 was pretty uncomfortable. Okay, in other videos, I show that major stock indices failed to even beat cash over the full year. Basically, it was a very difficult year to make money, even with hindsight, as John Authors put it on Bloomberg. All major indices ended the year down. Here are three terms, therefore, that will be important to your approach in 2019. They're not new, they're not rocket science, but they're too easily forgotten. So, word one is uncertainty. Yes, you will need to get used to the idea that markets are unpredictable in 2019. There are so many ways in which unpredictability could pan out this year. Sources include Brexit, and that's the big one if you're a UK investor. Will it happen? Will it happen on time? What sort of form will it take? Soft, not so soft, hard, no deal, who knows? The trick as an investor is not to get distracted. It's fascinating viewing, it's almost sort of uh, car crash viewing in one sense, but don't get distracted by it. The path of interest rates, number two, that's critical. Behind all the political shenanigans in the UK, the path of interest rates, the Bank of England's policy on interest rates, the European Central Bank, and above all, the Federal Reserve, vital. How far, how fast will rates be lifted? Keep an eye on inflation data. Don't be overly distracted by the politics. And the end of reversal of QE. This is going on behind the scenes. The Americans have started it ahead of everybody else, if you like. This is reversing the program of printing money, as it was known, QE, bond buying, putting the lever back, reversing that out. The speed and the way it's done will have an impact on asset prices as we go through the year. Then Trump and the trade war. That's not helping. So Donald Trump seems intent on pursuing this trade war with China, how wide it goes, how long it lasts, clearly influencing stock prices and confidence. Emerging markets, including China, separate to anything Donald Trump's up to, we've seen evidence of some slowing in the market in China, property markets and so on. So that, given it's the world's biggest emerging market and one of its far fastest growing emerging markets, that's pretty key by itself. And finally, leaving Brexit to one side, European discord and economic divergence. Germany, for example, the powerhouse of Europe, shown a few signs of creaking recently, but not so many signs as Italy, arguably France, Macron's France, that is, with the yellow vest protests and so on, and of course, Greece. So watch out for signs that the European economy is creaking separate to any decision about Brexit that may be reached by the EU and the UK. Now, the key, as I mentioned in a moment, is not to get unduly distracted by all this stuff. But here's a word you should be distracted by, liquidity. Investors often forget about this. They just think risk in financial markets is all about whether the prices go up, go down, how far, how fast. But this risk matters arguably as much. If you need to get your money off the table, how quickly can you do it? And can you do it at a price that you want? Now, liquidity, I'm going to suggest this year, needs to be monitored three ways. Individuals need to make sure, as I'll stress at the end, that they're not forced into selling shares, for example, because they simply haven't planned. They simply haven't mapped out their rainy day funds, their foreseeable calls on capital, and so on. Companies, watch out if you're an investor. Don't just pay attention to earnings, beats, misses, all right, P ratios, make sure you're focusing on liquidity, their ability to pay short-term debts, their access to funding if they need it, and their overall gearing, debt to equity. You might say in a bull market, great, debt can accelerate the returns to equity investors. But in the market we're in at the moment, best be described as a sideways market, you need to be looking more carefully at liquidity. And finally, funds. Open-ended funds don't quite do what it says on the tins. A unit trust, for example, can face pressure. If a lot of investors try and liquidate, we've seen this in the commercial property market, for example, it can put pressure on open-ended funds to meet what are called redemptions. And funds that are not organized, not sufficiently liquid, will potentially hit trouble. Now, closed-ended funds, on the other hand, don't face the same pressure. So review, what type of funds are you in and what sort of liquidity of parameters can they operate within? So liquidity, not a very exciting word, but I think a word that's gonna be important to individuals, you and me, companies in terms of the way you look at them, and funds too. Now the third word, if you think this is all a bit depressing, the third word 
is opportunity. Now, it takes a little bit of steel to recognise this, but here's the point. When food gets cheaper, you don't buy less of it. That was Warren Buffett. The point being, investors are prone to think when prices fall, it's all bad news. But over the long term, surely there has to be some opportunity here if you know what you're looking for, because you are getting a chance to add the building blocks of a portfolio cheaper than you could six months ago. So how are we going to take advantage of this? Well, first of all, by recognising it for what it is, the yield on the FTSE All Share, that's the broad index UK shares, around 5% at the start of the year. Well, there's a fairly generous income incentive for a start, and compared to the so-called risk-free bond yield, equities do look reasonable value, especially in certain pockets, as I make this video in January 2019. But it takes a bit of confidence to see that. Sizable corrections are common. So people who don't remember back before the last financial crisis, for example, might be thinking, well, no, they're not. But actually, 10% corrections, 10% or more, are pretty common. They're part and parcel of equity investing. They're not something to be avoided, ducked, uh, or even feared. They're just something to be accepted and managed. And people who haven't invested for long, who've come into the market recently, won't be familiar with them. And that could potentially lead them to make some mistakes. Shakeouts usually generate bargains. Now, you might think, hang on a minute. I've taken all this trouble to diversify my equity portfolio and the whole thing's dropped. That's called systemic risk. Yes, but when the market marks everything down together across the board, then you get opportunities, if you know what you're looking for, to pick up bargains, to pick up good names for a lot less than you would have paid for them six months ago. Now, it takes a certain perspective to see that, but it's a really important mindset to have, not gloom and doom across the board. So, be safe, but not sorry. Bit of a cliche, what do I mean by that? Well, basically, Never panic sell. So do not read media headlines every five minutes. Don't look on, on, on your iPhone, for example. Never panic sell. One of the problems with apps is they do allow you to dump everything really quickly, push on a button, but that's precisely what you shouldn't be doing. Number two, avoid forced selling. Now this is not about apps being great, this is about planning. This is about having that rainy day fund, identifying those foreseeable calls on capital that you'll need to fund in the near future, and then allocating the rest to a long-term equity basket, let's say. So that planning is more important than ever. Make sure you are reviewing imminent foreseeable calls on capital and positioning your funds accordingly. Thirdly, pound cost average. If you are worried about getting into the market right now, don't go in with a lump sum. Drip feed your way in. Be sensible about it because that will mean that you're taking advantage of these dips. I mean, pound cost averages, if they get it right, almost automatically buy on some of the dips, if you like. And that, over the long term, pays back dividends, as I point out in other videos. Prepare rather than predict. Nobody knows exactly where stock markets will end up at the end of 2019. No one has that crystal ball. All right, but preparation is key. So yes, this year, it's a fair assumption, will probably be more uncertain and more volatile than previous years. That's just the law of averages. That happens in stock markets from time to time. That will terrify short-term gamblers and will push many hedge funds to the wall, potentially. You might say, well, so what? Okay. If you are terrified by short-term corrections in the stock market, you probably shouldn't be in the stock market in the first place. Rational long-term investors will be much more sanguine. All right? They'll stick to their plan, they'll spot opportunities to pick up bargains, they'll adjust the way they enter the market, pound cost averaging and so on, and carry on. So the conclusion is change what you control, manage what you don't, i.e. short-term volatility, and know the difference. So you do control your portfolio allocation, you do control your planning, but you don't control the stock market. Accept that. Manage it. So, what do I mean by that? Plan. Get your financial plan in place. Ideally, you do this on a regular basis anyway, so you're thinking, well, I already do that. I already reviewed it six months ago. I'm already well positioned, but that's crucial. Number two, diversify. The old investing cliche, but it is important. Diversify across asset classes. Diversify internationally. Diversify across different sectors. Okay, make sure you are not overly committed to one type of asset or asset class. Thirdly, discuss. Bear markets and markets that are volatile can be scary. It's, it, it's worrying when a portfolio goes down to you know, 10%. So discuss, discuss with family members, discuss with an advisor, but whatever you do, make sure you have a conversation with somebody before you just hit the red button going, well, I'm out. Because then you've got to worry about how much it's going to cost you to get out, how much tax you might be paying, capital gains tax and so on, and when on earth do you get back in again? Lots of ground covered, three key messages, editor at killick.com with queries, and to watch videos on some of the things I mentioned, pound cost averaging, for example, tax, if that's a key concern to you, then killick.com forward slash learn and click on the tabs on the left hand side.